Hey, welcome back everybody. In this video, we are going to refactor our guessing game. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace this vector with a templatized array. Now, would you actually want to do this? Hmm, probably not, but it doesn't hurt to practice because we definitely are going to run into these arrays. So we want to make sure we have them down pretty good. But first things first, you need to check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now, first thing when you want to work with templatized array is you need to include them at the top. So what we're going to do is just say include and say array. Simple as that. Now, the way this application works is we have this print vector function. We're going to change that to a print array function. We talked about that in the previous video. Should be very simple. And we have this play game function where we're using this vector. So we're just going to change this to an array and we need to pass in a size, we'll say 251. That's because the random number can be anywhere from zero to 250. So if you wanna include all possibilities, you need to make it 251. That will also include space for the correct answer. So you can store that in the array as well. We're also going to need to define a count variable, which is basically going to keep track of how many guesses it took them to get it right. That's because although we might be able to get the size of the entire array, it doesn't necessarily tell us how many of those elements are filled with actual data. So this is the easiest way to basically say how many of the spots in the array are being used. So every single time through this iteration, we're going to increment count. And the easiest way to do that is within the insertion. So we're just going to say guesses index count plus plus. So the first iteration that's going to be zero and then it will increment and then it'll be one and so forth. So what are we going to assign to this index? We're going to assign guess. So we can just get rid of this line here. There we go. And now at the bottom, we have a function call to print vector. We're just going to also pass in the count. And instead of print vector, we're going to rename this to print array. Now let's go refactor that function to make sure it works properly. So let's scroll to the top. First things first, let's change the name. We'll just make it print array. And this is going to take an array of size 251. We can name this sucker array. We're also going to have that count variable, so we'll just go into, I'm just gonna call it size in this case. You can call it whatever you want. Now instead of vector.size, we're just going to use the size parameter, and instead of vector of i, we're going to call array of i. So that should work, but let's just compile, and make sure we got everything going. Now when we run, we can play the game, and guess some numbers, let's go 97, 98, 100, and then 99. And we get it, and it all prints out just fine. So that is how you would refactor this to use an array, specifically a templatized array. So once again, maybe it's not the best practice, I'd probably stick with the vector, but now I would say your experience with templatized arrays is pretty good. So what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to basically take the three collections we've talked about so far, give the pros and cons of each, the differences between them, and when you should use which. And then at that point, I'll say you have a pretty good solid understanding of the basic collections and we can move on to something new. So check that video out because it's going to basically wrap up everything we've been talking about. It'll be tremendously helpful. And thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. Peace, and I'll see you in the next video.